The Black Templars are among the most zealous chapters of the Adeptus Astartes, charging into battle with unmatched ferocity to administer their God Emperor's justice face to face with the enemy. They are his wrath made manifest, their weapons chained to their wrists to ensure that they leave their hands only after victory, if at all. With the recent range refresh, the new models certainly do these stories justice, but to me there is one that stands out, one that embodies their zeal above all others. Bayard's Revenge. And I need to paint it. I wanted to do something special with this model, so I decided not to follow the box art and make the Space Marine's armor look like black marble. I prepared the model in sub-assemblies just for ease of access. With such complicated miniatures, this is pretty much the only way to go if you want to paint them well. I started with priming everything black. It's the color I usually go with, I prefer to start with something darker and then work my way up to highlights. So, I applied my primer through the airbrush everywhere, including the unfortunate orc that is having a rather bad day, and the base as well. The next step is quite interesting, I think. I used a dried baby wipe that I stretched, like so. I then wrapped the Space Marine in it and applied a mix of Troll Blood base from P3 Formula and black through the airbrush to get my marble effect started. I have to add that I was quite hesitant to go overboard with it. I wanted to continue with the brush to simply have more control over the final result. While I was still in airbrush mode, I used some white to give the orc and the base a zenithal highlight. I made sure to leave plenty of shadows below and focus the highlights on the most raised parts. The plan was to use speed paints to get the orc and the base finished quickly. A white zenithal and a dry brush of white is my go-to method for these paints. Next up, I used Trollblood base with a bit of black to paint in the veins. Looking at reference photos all the while to make sure this reads as marble when it's finished. I tried to keep them very thin and realistic. When working on something like this, I found that you really need to trust the process and give it a chance. At this moment the miniature wasn't looking especially appealing, but I pushed on anyway. Getting through the ugly face of the miniature can be quite difficult sometimes. I wasn't very worried about making any mistakes at that stage. The plan was to add more layers anyway, so that wasn't really an issue. I could always just correct and adjust things during the next stage. Next up, I added some more veins, this time using pure black. I wanted there to be more contrast on the armor and this helped a lot. There was some back and forth here to make sure all the parts of the miniature were painted to the same level. I also added watered down black paint around the model for some variation and contrast. Marble is not very uniform, so I wanted it to look different, darker in some spots. Next up, I used pure Trollblood base for some initial edge highlights using mostly the side of my brush. I kept them quite broad as I wanted to add another level of edge highlights anyway. I used underbelly blue for extreme edge highlights. This brightened the edges a lot, but I applied it sparingly in places that would get the most light. There's something oddly satisfying about edge highlighting, don't you think? 
I haven't mentioned this, but I painted this model for a friend. This means that I won't be able to keep it, and I have to admit, that won't be easy. It's such an interesting model, I think one of the best ones I've seen from Games Workshop. I'm sure it's going to be used in painting competitions very frequently. I'm probably going to get one for myself after this. Time for a break and some coffee. There's a reason coffee breaks are practiced in companies everywhere. They ultimately increase your productivity. They help with longer painting sessions too. Back to painting. I wanted to paint the Black Templar symbols as white marble to keep everything consistent and also introduce more contrast. I started with giving them a few thin coats of grey sear. Next up, I gave all the white an edge highlight of white scar. It's always nice to start with grey when you're painting white, as there's always a step lighter you can take it for highlights. Then I used watered down black paint to make it look more like marble, trying to replicate the veins I painted earlier. There was some back and forth I had to do here as well, but ultimately I ended up with something I was quite happy with. For the robes, I figured that a dark red would go nicely with the black blue of the armor. So I used corn red to start with. I mixed in some cardiac flesh from P3 formula. I added in even more cardiac flesh for a final highlight, only on the most raised parts of the robes. Then I gave the sword a few coats of heavy green mixed with foul green, just to have a smooth, darkish surface to work on. I used pure and quite thin foul green going around the center of the sword in a rather rough pattern. I wanted the sword to ultimately look like it's burning with this greenish energy. I went around the sword a few times, like so. I tried not to get the lighter green into the writing, but you know how it is. I then used foul green with a bit of white scar in the same fashion, but much more sparingly. I then used the initial mix of heavy green and foul green to touch up the letters a bit. Finally, I used a very light mix of white scar and foul green for the very edges of the sword. As you can see, I used the side of my brush for this exclusively. With the right consistency of paint, this is actually quite easy to do. I gave all the leather and parchment bits a few coats of charred brown. I then gave all of these a very rough highlight of charred brown and avalanche sunset, again in quite a rough fashion to make the texture on them a bit different. I continued on with this mix, adding in more yellow, but only on the leather pouches, focusing the highlights more and more towards the edges, and still keeping them quite rough. 
For the parchment, I used a more muted color, mixing charred brown with sundry dust. For the final highlight, I used pure sundry dust. Okay, time to paint the orc and the base. As I mentioned, my plan was to use speed paints to speed things up a bit. I chose colours that would go nicely with the marine while still giving the orc a unique and interesting look. These paints work really well on organic uneven surfaces and both the orc and the base are full of these. If you're ever looking for a shortcut, seriously, try these paints. I've made a video documenting my very first experience with them. You can check it out right here if that sounds interesting. Alright, let's go. I started by giving everything a dry brush of white scar just to make sure all the edges really pop when the speed paints are applied. For the skin of the orc I used a mix of plasmatic bold and zealot yellow which resulted in a lighter, more yellowish colour compared to, for instance, orc skin, which is a lovely paint but a bit too intense and dark for me. I applied this very carefully, making sure not to get the green on any other parts of the miniature. I used some crusader skin for the gums, letting it sink into the teeth a bit too. I used blood red for the eyes, again very carefully. To introduce a bit more colour, I used Fire Giant Orange on any armour panels. I used Dark Wood on the trousers here. Also, Slaughter Red for the tongue. Then I used Grim Black on any straps, belts, boots and so on, anything that's not too important. This will also be a nice contrast for the light skin of the orc and the orange I used on the armor panels. As for the power claw, I used Gravelord Grey, which is not my favorite color in the range, but it kinda looks like metal when you give it a bit of metallic chipping. So, using a sponge and some metallic paint, I added some scratches and chipping to the power claw. When it comes to battle damage, I think less is more, so I focused mainly on the edges. I did the same thing with the orange, but using a bit of black paint instead. The only thing left was the base. I gave it a white dry brush as well, as there's plenty of texture on it and I wanted it to be clearly visible. I used palette bone on the base, as I wanted to keep it relatively light, to contrast the Black Templar. I applied this colour everywhere, making sure everything is covered. White unpainted spots are certainly not welcome. As always, I painted the rim of the base black, and you know what? That's it! Finally, let's take a look at the finished miniature in all its glory. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you next time.